Hello, everyone, and welcome to Michigan Student GOTV Rally, a nonpartisan town hall about making your plan to vote. My name is Jessica Thompson. I am a resident of Davison, Michigan, and I attended Michigan State University and Macomb Community College, and I am currently studying political science. I am a member of the Michigan Department of State's Collegiate Student Advisory Task Force, which was created last year to help address and identify barriers to youth participation in our elections and to recommend solutions for how to solve them. I will be your co-moderator for tonight's event. And I'm Corey, your other moderator. I'm a senior at the University of Michigan where I'm double majoring in political science and history. I interned at the Department of State over the summer and I've served as a White Lake poll worker for the past five elections. This semester, I'm interning with the Ann Arbor City Clerk's Office through a partnership with the Big Ten Voting Challenge. Jessica and I are here to guide us through the program this evening. Please type any questions about voting, election security, or your voting rights in the chat, and we will answer them before the town hall is over. Lastly, before we get started, we would like to thank and recognize all of the organizations who co-sponsored this event. Michigan Association of State Universities, Michigan Independent Colleges and Universities, Campus Vote Project, the All In Challenge, the Big Ten Voting Challenge, Campus Election Management Project, and Pergam Students. Thank you to all of you for the work you do each day to encourage and empower students to make their voices heard in our democracy. Thanks, Corey. One of the barriers we identified on the Collegiate Student Advisory Task Force was access to trusted and reliable information about voting and our elections. So tonight, we will hear from Secretary Jocelyn Vinson and Attorney General Dana Nessel about how we can all make a plan to vote and make sure all of our friends are ready to vote too. Then Corey and I will moderate a Q&A with Secretary and the Attorney General. So put those questions in the chat. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce Attorney General Dana Nessel for brief remarks. Hi, everybody. Just want to say thank you so much, everybody, for um, participating, for putting this event on. Uh, this is for sure a, a confusing time when it comes to many of the rules and regulations that um, uh, involve voting for 2020. And, and uh, for many of you, uh, this might be your, your first time voting in a general uh, election for the president. It pro it's probably your first time for most of you. Um, I. Uh, I just, I remember my first time voting uh, for president, which was a really, really long time ago, but uh, I, I, it was, I was the one person in Michigan that voted for Michael Dukakis, that's all I'm gonna say. But I voted from, from Ann Arbor, uh, stood in line way too long, but I was super excited about it. And um, I have basically never missed an election since that time because I'm just a huge political geek and uh, I, I'm very excited about our democratic process. Uh, and I'm, I'm excited that you guys all obviously feel the same way if you're on this right now. Um, but part of the reason that, you know, the Secretary of State and I have felt it's so important to do a lot of these town halls is exactly because there have been so many changes. Um, now, we'll start with the fact that, of course, Proposition 3, uh, for any of you who voted in, uh, in 2018, uh, was passed. And so that created no reason absentee voting, which came at a great time, fortunately for all of us, because uh, we did not know when we voted on that a few years ago that there would be a global pandemic um, the next even year election. But here we are in the midst of COVID-19. And uh, as a result, obviously, having the option to vote absentee for everyone um, has been a, a huge bonus. And I know that uh, Secretary Benson will go into what some of the current numbers are on that. A lot of people in Michigan, fortunately, are taking advantage uh, of this. But uh, with that, you know, there, there's also been a lot of uh, changes back and forth because there's been a lot of litigation surrounding what the rules are. And that's why, again, it's so important to talk about exactly what the rules are and exactly how to vote, where to vote, when to vote, and how to make sure your vote counts. Uh, and so that's what Secretary Benson and I are, are trying to accomplish to answer as many questions about the voting process as possible and just make sure that everybody has an opportunity to have your voice heard. Um, 
obviously I, I think we we all are aligned in feeling as though this is an incredibly important election year and we just want to make sure as many people can be involved in the process as possible um, and so that's our goal that's our mission and uh, we really appreciate I don't mean to speak for uh, for the secretary but I, I know that you know, I appreciate having the opportunity to address everybody. And the two of us, we've kind of like taken our show on the road virtually. Uh, and we've talked to, you know, tens of thousands of, of people and audiences all over the state and just really looking forward to sort of set the record straight on any misconceptions that are out there and make sure that everybody knows exactly what they need to do to make sure that their vote counts this year. So that, I'll uh, move the program along. Okay, and with that, it is my pleasure to introduce our Chief Elections Officer and Secretary of State, Jocelyn Benson. Hi, everyone. Thanks. Sorry, I was on a, another town hall before this one. They just kept going and going and going. So I appreciate your patience and thank you, Attorney General, as well for being here and uh, being part of this really important conversation, uh, which, you know, it's so critical that we ensure uh, that even in this time of great uncertainty and great challenge as a country and as a state, uh, that you all know uh, that, and you all, you all know exactly how to ensure your votes are counted and your voices are heard this year, and you've got the certainty and clarity that no matter what option you choose to vote and ensure your voice is heard, uh, that you can choose one and be fully confident that your vote will indeed count. Uh, and so what we want to talk about tonight is, you know, and answer your questions on are sort of all those things. What do we need to do to ensure uh, that uh, you have all the information you need uh, to move forward uh, with full confidence in the democratic process this year? But also we want to really enlist you as, as uh, folks helping us get the word out, not just to your peers, uh, but to voters all throughout the state of Michigan who will be inundated and already are being inundated with significant amounts of misinformation uh, and confusing information about the right to vote this year. And you uh, can play a specific role, a critical role, at pushing back with trusted information, just as the Attorney General and I have been working to do in town halls like this all across the state. Uh, and so tonight we really want to talk about that, answer your questions, and our ask and our, our, our hope is that we will enlist and empower you to join us as ambassadors of accurate information to voters throughout the state in the final two weeks up until the polls close on November 3rd at 8 p.m. and even beyond, telling the story of how not only are we ready for November in every way, but that voters should have complete confidence in our process, that every vote will count, every voice will be heard, and the ultimate results of our election will be an accurate reflection of the will of the people. Uh, now, notably, one of the if you could call it silver linings of this year's election is that citizens have more options to vote than ever before. And through our collegiate task force and working with many of you who have helped organize tonight's town hall, we've been able to make sure that the new options citizens have to vote this year are particularly in line with your needs as college students and as young voters in our state. Of course, as the Attorney General mentioned in 2018, voters overwhelmingly amended our state constitution to among other things, give you all, give every citizen the right to vote um, by mail, the right to register to vote up to and on election day itself, as well as numerous other rights. And a part, as part of that, my role as the state's chief election officer has been to make real those rights for every voter. And we know that college students have really specific needs when it comes to ensuring that, for example, you have all the tools you need to register to vote. Uh, and so I want to talk about real briefly voter registration and then the voting process, and then we can go into our Q&A and discussion. On the voter registration side, as of today, which is two weeks out, you have to register if you're not already registered in person at your local clerk's office or at a local clerk's satellite office. Uh, when you do so, bring proof of residency so that you can use that to confirm your identity and your residence uh, and know that you can, uh, up until 8 p.m. on election day, show up at your clerk's office and register. Tell your peers that as well. All eligible citizens who are you know, over the age of 18 and citizens of the United States are eligible to vote if you're a resident of the state of Michigan. Uh, and so uh, be sure to make, to ensure that every one of your peers knows that just because you aren't registered, even on election day itself, you can go to your clerk's office, register, and uh, get your ballot, fill it out, and return it, and be done. So there's really no excuse. Everyone should be voting this year, and indeed, 
millions are. Uh, so the second thing or the last thing I want to, or maybe second of three things I want to mention briefly is, you know, once you're registered, how do you get your ballot? Well, right now, we're again, two weeks out prior to election day or when the polls close on November 3rd. Because of that, we want you to make sure that you are uh, not uh, falling whim to the variables of an uncertain post office. Uh, and if you request to have your ballot, if you don't already have your ballot, if you want your ballot early, we encourage you to, now you can request it by mail still at michigan.gov slash voter by calling your local clerk. You can still ask for your ballot to be mailed to you. And you probably still have time to get it and return it uh, prior to 8 p.m. on election day. Uh, but you can also just pick up your ballot today or any day up until Monday, November 2nd at four o'clock at your local clerk's office, fill it out and return it at a local drop box or at your local clerk's office. As long as it's received by 8 p.m. on election day, your vote will count. And if you wanna vote early, or if you want just time to vote from home, we recommend you pick up your ballot from your clerk's office, fill it out, and then return it at your Dropbox, local Dropbox or local clerk's office as soon as possible. Now, notably many college communities, including Ann Arbor and East Lansing, also have satellite clerk's offices that I know many of you have already taken advantage of and used. So you can use those as well for everything I just talked about, registering, picking up, and returning your ballot. The last, last thing I just want to mention is, again, go back to the issue of misinformation. Uh, that because so many of this is new, so much of this is new this year, uh, we need your help to make sure voters, all voters, know exactly how to register, get their ballot, and return their ballot on time to ensure that it's counted. So go to michigan.gov slash vote. Use that as your portal uh, for information. Uh, and uh, Sally Marsh, who's from my team, who's on this call, who is the staff supporting our collegiate task force, has also created and set up portals for collegiate or specific information for college students. Uh, but you can, again, rely on michigan.gov slash vote to be your one-stop shop for everything you need when it comes to voting. By entering your voting information, you'll get your polling place, your clerk's office, your local drop boxes. You can track your ballot, make sure it's been received on time by your clerk. Uh, so please also spread the word about that website as well. Thanks again for having us here tonight. We're looking forward to your questions. Thank you, Chief Elections Officer, Secretary of State Jocelyn Benson, and Attorney General Nessel. We are now going to move into the Q&A. So if you haven't already put your questions in the chat, please do so now. I'll ask the first question. What should someone do if they requested to vote by mail but haven't received their ballot yet? I can take that one. Uh, it's pretty easy. One, it, well, it, one I would go to michigan.gov slash vote, enter your voter information, and see if your ballot has been sent to you. That can help you make an educated um, estimate as to whether or not it's going to be received soon. And again, you still have two weeks until the polls close, so we have some time. Uh, but I would make that your first step. Uh, secondly, by entering your voter information, you will also see the contact information for your local clerk. Uh, if you, uh, if you uh, need a sort of advice on what to do, or perhaps your ballot hasn't been sent to you yet, you can reach out to them and find out the status uh, specifically or more information if you don't feel comfortable with whatever information that you've been given through the tracking tool. Uh, the third thing I'd recommend, though, is just going to your local clerk's office or a satellite office and picking up your ballot. Uh, that's uh, what you can do to give you just the, the peace of mind of having your ballot in hand that you can then control as to when you return it. And I recommend at this point that you use a local Dropbox or your clerk's office to return your ballot early. Uh, and then no, even if you don't do any of this, if you still haven't received your ballot by election day, you can just go to your precinct and vote as well. Now I know many of you are living on campus or are away from home. And so a lot of you are dependent on the mail right now to receive and return your ballots. Uh, so that said, uh, um, I, I would recommend that you do call your clerk, uh, check the status of your ballot, uh, and uh, do everything you can to um, get a ballot uh, in hand uh, and then return it as soon as possible. Um, but in addition to that, of course, also um, your lifeline is really contacting your local clerk. Um, there are a number, number of other things that you could do if you're um, you know, out, out, out of community or if you need specific advice. So I'd also recommend uh, if you have a specific question, post it in the chat along with your contact information and Sally Marsh from my team will get back to you because I recognize or, you know, some of you may be in Muskegon but voting in Marquette and haven't gotten your ballot yet. And so if there are specific things like that that we can help problem solve with you, I want to do that. 
Thank you, Secretary Benson. For our next question, I will ask, how does straight ticket voting work? And more specifically, if you vote straight Republican, but for one or two Democrats, how does this affect your ballot? Will it be invalidated? Dana, you want to take that one or you want me to? I'm no, happy to... that's all you, Secretary Benson. <laughs> all right. Straight party voting was another piece voted and enshrined in our state constitution in the 2018 uh, voter driven amendment. Uh, and the, the, basically the way to think about that is it's like your, your baseline. If you, uh, you know, enter one party at the straight party voting level, you can override that selection through any individual office. And it only applies if a selection or a candidate office that is partisan is left blank. Then the, the voting machine will automatically import whatever partisan line you chose or straight you know, party line you chose and use that to select the candidate. So look at that as a fail safe. If you leave something open uh, and you don't select a candidate in that particular position, uh, it, it, your, your, um, your ballot tabulation will default to whatever party you chose, but you can again override it. You can even vote straight one party and then override it in every single office. Uh, just, I don't know, because it's fun. Um, you, can, you have that option uh, when filling out your ballot, it won't invalidate your ballot. Uh, it's simply meant to really catch any um, candidate that are for partisan office that you miss or, or don't fill out, uh, and then it automatically um, tallies your vote for the candidate of that party that you select. Okay, thank you. Does it matter where a student is registered to vote? What if the they registered at their school address and now they are living at home or somewhere else because of the pandemic. So I'll say a couple of things. You can update your voter registration to reflect your current residence up till and on election day itself at your local clerk's office and then get a ballot and return it right there. So there is an option if you are, um, you know, it, again, it, it depends on a, a various different factors, um, which is why it's good to also contact your local clerk. You can also, by the way, call 866-R-VOTE. It's a nonpartisan voter protection hotline where, where attorneys are standing by really between now and election day to answer you know, your specific questions and help you troubleshoot. So I, I want to always say that, you know, there are always specific challenges based on um, you know, dates and times and locations and all of that. Uh, but that same day voter registration option, your, the option to um, uh, newly register or update your registration up until and on election day itself uh, does give you, if you're able to go to a local clerk's office in wherever your, your residency is at the moment, the ability to update your voter registration and then vote in that new community where you're newly registered. Uh, so, um, you know, best case is to, uh, you know, again, um, contact your local clerk uh, who can oftentimes walk you through the process, but if you can't reach your local clerk, 866-R-VOTE is fully staffed and they should be able to walk you through your sort of specific needs. Excellent. We're now going to move to questions from the chat specifically. And our first question is, how can we make sure that voters and poll workers stay safe and healthy? Well, we have making, made plans for that, uh, recognizing that there's really three ways you can vote. You can vote early uh, through the mail, utilizing the mail to get and return your ballot. You can vote early in person at your clerk's office, getting your ballot from your clerk and then returning it to your clerk's office or through a ballot drop box, or you could vote in person on election day itself. And making sure each of those areas are equally safe has been a priority of our administration since the beginning of this year. Now on election day itself, where you've got that in-person interaction, Know that if you do show up to vote in your local precinct, you'll be met with poll workers wearing masks, gloves, sneeze guards, with dis social distancing protocols met and in place all throughout the precinct. Uh, and uh, we encourage voters to wear a mask as well to keep yourself as well as those around you healthy and safe and protected. Uh, and we also have, because you know, we're estimating probably two thirds of our Voters this year will be voting early in person at their clerk's office or through the mail uh, or returning a ballot at a drop box. Uh, that will, though we'll have more people voting in this year's election than ever before um, because two thirds will be, have already voted essentially by election day, we estimate. On election day itself, it is very unlikely you'll see large crowds or long lines on election day. Uh, now, of course, anything can happen and we're trying to plan for that, but we anticipate, we, we've certainly done everything we can to minimize crowding at the polling place and ensure that all workers, all people in the polling places are safe uh, and secure. And um, any, any, anyone in the polling place, um, you know, we do ask that you wear a mask and we certainly provide PPE for all of our election workers there. Thank you. 
For those choosing to vote in person, who should they contact if they see people seeking to intimidate voters at the polls? Uh, do you want me to take that? Secretary? I'm going to hand that over to our yeah. illustrious attorney general yeah. who has prioritized protecting every voter's safety at the polls. Um, but I'll add 866 our vote. Okay, <laughs> thank you for that. Yeah. So we have, um, we've been coordinating with law enforcement all over the state just to ensure that there are no um, disruptions of any type when it comes to um, people having the right to, of course, exercise their fundamental right to vote. We want to make sure that everyone feels safe and protected. And, um, you know, drawing a line from uh, the United States Supreme Court in, a, in, in one of their decisions, they, they talk about how um, when you vote, uh, when you're at the polls, it should be an island of calm where voters can peaceably contemplate their choices. And so we don't want anything to interfere with the voters' ability to just think about who they're going to vote for and get through the process safely and never, ever have to worry about their safety or security. So you've heard uh, Secretary Benson talk about the types of safety and security from COVID. Um, but in addition to that, uh, you know, people, people have been concerned about any kind of disruptions at the polls. And so what we've done is, you know, we've put out legal guidance uh, to all our law enforcement partners around the state, that's Michigan State Police, the Sheriff's Association, all the municipal police departments in the state. We've gone through all of the voter uh, election laws. And, and the thing that we want people to know and understand is that you know, threatening a voter, uh, intimidating a voter, um, harassing a voter, these are all felonies in the state of Michigan. And you know, traditionally, we really haven't had much in the way of trouble with this. It's very rare that we have any of those problems. Um, we're not expecting, we're not anticipating that we'll have any of those problems. But of course, we want to do everything to make sure that we know in advance that we are ready to handle it if any situations at all arise, which we hope that they won't. And so as Secretary Benson said, if you have any concerns like that, you can go, you know, you can vote tomorrow. You can, you can vote early and you don't have to worry about um, going to the polls. But if you feel as though it's really important to vote in person and that's something that you've prioritized and that's the way you want to exercise your right to vote, then you can do that too. And just know that we've been coordinating with law enforcement. It, law enforcement, you're not going to have, you know, uh, your, your sheriff or your, you know, uh, Michigan State Police or your municipal police standing right there just watching you. Um, but if an incident arises and if anybody is disruptive in any way, then, you know, the precinct captain or somebody who's at the polls will be able to immediately, uh, you know, call law enforcement, immediately call our, our department, um, and we'll be able to resolve the matter, um, you know, right away and make sure that nobody feels as though they have any issues with their safety or security. That's, that's the most important thing for us on election day is to make sure that everybody feels safe and secure. And so Secretary Benson and I are forwarding coordinating together to make certain that everybody can um, can have that feeling of, of you know, uh, of calm and just, um, just to be excited the way that I was a dork and excited in 1988 to vote for Michael Dukakis for some reason. This is what I'm saying. Just like go and enjoy yourself and, and enjoy the experience of participating in democracy and of, of supporting whoever the candidates are of your choice of whatever party and not and, and leave the rest of it to us and, and don't be concerned if you go in to vote just um, just be prepared to know who you're going to vote for and do your homework and that should be your job everything else should be my job and the secretary's job thank you our next question is, if somebody requests an absentee, val absentee voter ballot and instead chooses to vote in person, will that be considered double voting? Well, I'm happy to take that. I, I'm muting. Um, I'm happy to take that. The, um, you know, essentially, we track every ballot as it's been requested and received. Uh, and so, you know, if you do show up to vote, which we don't advise you do if you've already returned your ballot, uh, it will be in our system. You'll be told uh, you've already voted. And, and uh, so we don't want you to even attempt to do that. Uh, we have security protocols in place to ensure that only valid ballots are counted, that only one ballot per person is, is counted. Uh, and so, um, so we certainly, you know, encourage you to make sure you vote, to track your ballot online, uh, but also to 
um, to, to not heed uh, the calls of others uh, to show up at the polls on election day if you've already voted. Uh, that said, if you have not yet returned your ballot uh, and you have it with you, you can spoil it at the polls on election day and just vote in person there. So if you get a ballot sent to you uh, and you change your mind, you don't want to submit it early, you want to vote it in person on election day, you can take that ballot with you to your local precinct and vote right then and there by surrendering that ballot and you'll get a new one to vote in the precinct. Uh, and again, I would just also direct you again to michigan.gov slash vote because there's some specific, um, again, depending on you know where you are and your specific needs, there's some additional details there as well. Uh, and then also, of course, reaching out to your local clerk if you have any other specific questions. Thank you, Secretary Benson. What are the plans or incentives to increase the number of poll workers? I can take that one. Uh, so as many of you know, because many of you have signed up to be election workers, and thank you, uh, we launched a program called Democracy MVP, recognizing that our election workers are our most valuable players in democracy. We launched that program in uh, the spring of this year. Uh, since May, um, or when we launched it, uh, we saw more than 30,000 citizens all throughout the state of Michigan sign up to be election workers. Uh, we've been working to train and place those election workers, both, both in our August primary and in our November elections. A lot of communities have told us, we're good, we've got everyone we need. Not everyone though, some communities are still in need and we're working to, to match people uh, with locations throughout the state. The encouraging thing is that people have signed up from all corners of the state, every community, uh, many of the counties all over the state of Michigan have seen people volunteer to be election workers. So I'm confident that we're on track to avoid the pitfalls of what some other states have found where they've actually had to close down precincts because they haven't had enough poll workers. Uh, we will not only have enough poll workers, we'll actually have a reserve core of poll workers on hand on standby on election day itself to fill in any unnecessary or un unexpected vacancies. Uh, that may emerge on election day. We know certainly with the pandemic, that's a reality, uh, but also times there may be a lot of reasons why people may at the last minute not be able to serve as a poll worker and we don't want that to impact people's voting experience. So we're ready to go in that regard in particular because so many of you and so many of your uh, uh, fellow citizens all around the state have signed up to be election workers this year. Uh, and I'm proud that our state has really been ahead of the curve in that. Many other states have followed suit uh, and because of, uh, because of, and as well as many nonpartisan organizations. Uh, and because of that, we're ready in Michigan to ensure our polls are fully staffed in November. Thank you, Secretary Benson. Um, Attorney General Nessel, I have a question for you. What is your office doing to counter election interference in active voter suppression on election day? Well, um, the most important thing that we're doing is trying to combat misinformation with accurate information. And voter suppression, you know, can take many forms. Uh, but for us here in Michigan, I think the thing that we've been most concerned about is people. Whoops. Sorry, I don't know what happened here. Is it because Jocelyn's background is so much better than mine that you're taking my my video away because i don't have i will just say it has taken months of of methodical <laughs> curation to get here so two weeks to go i gotta do something i know it's amazing i need some flags thank anyway, you anyway um so i uh, what we're trying to do all right let me let me just give you an example of something that i would say is a form of voter suppression that we had to tackle um a while ago, you might have heard that there were uh, 12,000 phone calls, robocalls, that were made to the 313 area code in the city of Detroit, um, providing misinformation, disinformation, I would say, uh, to largely to African American voters, uh, and saying to these voters, uh, if you are applying to vote absentee, your information is shared with creditors, your information will be shared with law enforcement. And if you have any outstanding warrants, they'll come and arrest you. Uh, and your information will be shared with the CDC and you'll be subject to a mandatory uh, vaccination program. I mean, all of that, I mean, talking about it today, it sounds ridiculous, right? I mean, like, of course those things aren't gonna happen. But, you know, remember, this is our first time that for a general election that we have no reason absentee voting. So most people have never voted absentee and most people really just don't know a lot about the process. And so that is a means to try to scare people away from voting absentee in a year where, of course, a lot of people don't want to go to the polls because they're 
uncomfortable being in a setting like that given the, the pandemic. Uh, so what, uh, what, what I did was this. Uh, we prosecuted the people that made those phone calls. We investigated it, we found out who they were, and we, we're prosecuting them right now because it's a crime. Again, voter suppression is a crime. If you uh, engage in any act, either directly or indirectly, that is designed with the intention to deter a person from voting, you are committing a crime. So that's an example of, of an effort at voter suppression that we had to tackle. Um, what frequently happens is the secretary's office or my uh, my department will come across information that somebody has put uh, online. Maybe they'll um, you know have a, a website, or maybe there'll be flyers, or, or or we just had a situation with a billboard. Sometimes these are not people who are actively trying to engage in voter suppression, but by giving incorrect information, sometimes inadvertently, that's the effect. So if you say, for instance, hey, the cutoff to register to vote is October 19th, and that's not the truth, and we know it's not the truth, and we know you can register to vote all the way up until election day, that's sort of a form of voter suppression, because for a whole lot of people, they're going to say, well, I missed my chance to vote when it's not true. So as soon as we see that, we are correcting that information. And if there is nefarious intent behind it, you know, if we think that a person did it, not because it was an accident, not because they make, made a mistake, but because they were legitimately trying to uh, suppress the vote, then, you know, we do take action against them criminally. But what we ask everybody to do uh, is we ask them if they see information that they think is incorrect, Firstly, to report it to us at misinformation at michigan.gov so that we can look into it. But the most important thing to do is uh, if you have any questions, you see something you're not sure, maybe that's true, maybe it's not true, to go right to Secretary Benson's website because it has all the information and it is all 100% accurate. And so that's uh, michigan.gov slash vote. Literally, any question you have, that's where the answer is. And so whenever you're confused, you see something, you're not sure about it, that's the place to go to know if you're getting correct information or not. Be very, very careful about what you see. And I'm just gonna say, just even reading um, what's in the, the group chat right now, I see disinformation in there. Uh, and I wanna say this, when you hear uh, lots of talk about election fraud, and people think, well, my vote is not gonna count, my vote will not be counted, um, somebody is taking uh, votes, they're taking ballots and they're dumping it somewhere. It's not true. It's, it's untrue information and it's designed to make people feel like, what's the point of voting? Because my vote's not going to be counted. So there's no reason for me to do it because uh, you know, my, they're not going to receive my vote or my vote's not going to be counted accurately or there'll be a problem with the tabulation. And we haven't had an experience with any of those things. Uh, the thing that we're most worried about is people just not understanding how to vote, when to vote, where to vote. And once you've got that down, your vote will count. Uh, and there won't be any issues with, with those items. So I think that's the most uh, important thing for people to know. Let me, let me uh, clarify something that I don't know if it's been brought up yet or not. But remember, uh, when you talk about having your vote count, we've been back and forth on the courts with this. and. What ultimately the courts have decided in Michigan is that your vote, your absentee ballot, needs to be in the hands of your clerk, your local clerk, by 8 p.m. November 3rd. And that's why we're saying to people, at this point, due to slowdowns in the mail, you, you, you might have seen that uh, a number of states had to actually sue the, the Postal Service because there were slowdowns in the mail. And as a result of it, it was really reducing the amount of time that people had to vote absentee. Uh, and so despite the fact that we have been successful in terms of getting a preliminary injunction, unfortunately, mail service has not really picked up. And I'm just going to point you to the fact that there was uh, an article from, I think, last week in the Washington Post, in, in the city of Detroit, there were folks that were only, you know, getting mail, cert, mail delivery one to two days a week, uh, or we're going five days at a time with no mail service. So we're at the point now where it's really important that if you're voting absentee, that you take your ballot 
and you go right to your clerk's office and hand deliver it or put it in the drop box for your local clerk just to make sure that it's received in time and that way you don't have to wonder and of course the great thing is uh secretary benson right on her website you know michigan.gov vote you can make sure that your ballot has been received so you don't have to wonder did it get there or not? You can check, you can put your name in, and it'll actually tell you the exact date that your ballot was received, so you can know for a fact that that occurred. So really, you know, the most important thing is just to know all of those kinds of facts, and then you will know that your vote actually counts. But when you hear the term uh, election fraud, or when you hear the term voter fraud, we're really talking about people putting misinformation uh, into the biosphere and not actual um, you know, miscalculation of the votes and, or not actually somebody dumping people's uh, absentee ballots anywhere. That absolutely hasn't happened. There have been a few cases where uh, Secretary Benson and I have, have, you know, she's done an investigation and I've done, and I've uh, initiated a prosecution because it happens so infrequently. And when it does happen, there are so many mechanisms in place to catch it when it occurs. So if it ever does happen, we know about it and it's practically never. So I just want to make that clear to everybody so you know that if you vote, it matters that you vote and your vote is going to count. Thank you, Attorney General Nessel. We appreciate that. How can students in quarantine housing and campus register and vote? I know that's something that's come up today. And by the way, I mean, come on, can you see why we have like the best attorney general in the country for real? And we're all so lucky to be working with her and have her here. Um, truly a great attorney um, and, a, and a great person. So uh, to, uh, the issue of quarantine, of course, is something we've been tracking. Um, and I know it applies differently to different students. So um, especially now in this two week window where online voter registration is now no longer an option, uh, we want to, and we're working with college campuses and local clerks on college campuses to, that have been a, a, a afflicted by the quarantine measures uh, to identify other solutions. So I would encourage you, uh, if you are a student uh, that is in quarantine, uh, to contact me directly at secretary at michigan.gov so that we can work with you directly on your specific campus issue uh, because the answer is going to change based on your um, needs and the um, the plans of your local clerk uh, but we're um, you know focused on this we're aware of this issue and we want to make sure uh, that your voting rights are protected even while in quarantine and there's several options that we're exploring to make sure that's the case we just need to work with you specifically on your unique circumstance to make sure we're giving you the best advice possible. So again, student in quarantine, in response to that question, wanting to register to vote or vote, haven't already done so, uh, email me at secretary at michigan.gov and we'll get you and work with you to find a solution. Thank you, Secretary Benson. We're gonna now move on to our last question and that is what should students do if they have specific questions or concerns while they're voting? number of things. One, um, you can always email me, secretary at michigan.gov, or you can email our uh, misinformation portal, which is misinformation at michigan.gov. But I also recommend you use 866-R-VOTE uh, as your voter protection hotline uh, to get any information you need. It's uh, fully staffed. You'll always be able to talk to someone directly, and these are trained, nonpartisan election protection attorneys. Uh, who are uh, there to help you, whether it's finding your polling place or responding to voter intimidation at the polls. And our office is closely linked and working closely with those folks there to make sure if there's anything we hear of, uh, we'll be able to fix it or find solutions for. And of course, if things rise to a legal issue, our attorney general is on it and ready to go uh, with anything that needs to happen in the days leading up to election day or on election day itself. Uh, but uh, you know, we're, um, we're, we're on duty, ready to, to support you. Uh, and uh, we just need to hear from you and calling 866-R-VOTE is one of the best ways to consistently reach attorneys there to help you uh, who will then connect with us if we need to uh, or can be involved. Thank you. Before we hear closing remarks from Secretary Benson and Attorney General Nessel, we would like to thank Campus Vote Project for hosting this virtual rally and the All-In Challenge for partnering on the Michigan Collegiate Vote Ch Voting Challenge. You can get involved with both of these organizations in the final two weeks before Election Day to help spread the word. 
The All In Campus Democracy Challenge, in collaboration with numerous partners, is hosting a week of nonpartisan voting power hours. During these friend, friend banking events, star studded hosts will quickly show attendees how to send pre written text messages with voting resources to friends and family. You can text contacts in your phone, which makes it easy and fun. Each night, we'll have different guest DJs, and hosts include Emma Stone, Tessa Thompson, Dave Matthews, Rami Youssef, Jessica Chastain, John Chu, John David Washington, and Selena Gomez. Go to allinchallenge.org slash power hour to register. All of these events will be live streamed on the All In Challenge's Facebook and YouTube. To briefly talk about the Michigan Student Vote Campaign, I would like to introduce Campus Vote Project Michigan Director, Samaya Ahmed Sheikh, to talk about what we can all do right now to take action. Thank you, Jessica, and thank you, Attorney General, as well as Secretary of State, Jocelyn Benson, for all your help um, with ensuring that students can get out the vote. I just wanted to chime in real quick to remind you all of the great resources that the Secretary of State's office, as well as Campus Vote Project and partners worked on to ensure that administrators and students have all the tools and resources that they need for final days to get out the vote. With that said, we have Michigan Students Vote Campaign, and there are three resources that are currently up and running for you all to use. One is the Michigan Students Vote Toolkit, which is several pages of information that the Secretary of State and Attorney General just went over um, sample posts, sample tweets, sample emails, things that you can just grab and go to let people know how to get out the vote. Secondly, we have the Secretary of State student website, www.michigan.gov slash student voting. It links to all the same resources that are on michigan.gov slash vote, but the student website is for student tailored and specific. You'll see some graphics that are tailored to students as well as the third thing which is the campus engagement calendar um, that has all the important election dates and deadlines on there and some national and statewide projects like the call today that campuses can get involved in to get out the vote um, lastly i just want to remind everyone to join our couch party with all in seat and several partners tonight that's happening i'm just going to go back to that page over here um, so join us tonight. Um, here's the link to register. It's bit.ly dot voting power hour. We'll be, you know, having a great time um, with our friends. You know, I know we can pull on the couch together, but here we are chilling on the Zoom call and getting out the vote. So thank you for having me on. Thank you, Sumaya. Before we go, I'd like to turn it back to Attorney General Nessel and Secretary of State Benson for any closing words. Attorney General Nessel, would you like to go first? Yeah, thank you so much uh, again for, for having me and having this opportunity to, um, to speak to everybody. And, um, you know, I just, I just want to say I, I, I really, when I think about voting, uh, I like to quote uh, Thomas Paine because uh, it really sort of encapsulates everything that I see about, uh, about, you know, what we do on election day or, or, or don't do. Um, and that's that voting is the right upon which all other rights are dependent. And so nothing is more important. Everything that you care about in life, I promise in one way or another is on the ballot in some form or another form. And it's just, that's, it's important to remember um, that a lot of the noise that you hear, and I know that it's very difficult. Um, I'm sure all of you guys are on social media quite a bit. I think everybody is uh, nowadays. And you hear so many different things and it's hard to know what's true or what's not true. Um, but, you know, that's why we, you know, the secretary has made available these great websites for you to go to. We really do ask that if you have any, can, if there's any confusion, if there's any concerns that you go to michigan.gov slash vote so that you can make sure uh, that you have accurate information and that you spread that accurate information around and let other people know or when you spot uh, other people, um, maybe circulating information that you think is incorrect, that, that you assist them and say, well, if you have a question about this, you should really go to michigan.gov slash vote or report anything that seems strange to misinformation at michigan.gov because there really is nothing more important than this. And uh, I, I know that for years and years, everybody talks about when are we gonna, you know, we have to get the youth vote. When, when are we gonna get young people to come out and vote? And for some reason, uh, it never really seems to happen in large numbers, but everything that you care about for the history of the rest of your lives uh, will be impacted in one way or another, predicated on, on this election. And I, I just 
can't encourage it enough just to go out there, have your voice heard, um, you know, cast your vote, encourage everybody you know to do the same uh, and uh, participate in uh, the democratic system. There's really, I think, nothing more special about the United States of America than having that opportunity. And I hope you'll all avail yourself of it and convince all your, uh, your friends, your colleagues, your family members to do the same. Ditto. Yes, all of the above. Uh, and uh, this is really a historic time for our country, for our state, uh, for all of you. Uh, and so uh, it's never been easier than now to register and vote in Michigan, even in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, so please do make your plan to vote if you haven't already. Please do spread the word uh, to everyone you know and use every platform you have to educate your, fe your fe friends and fellow citizens about their rights this year. Uh, and please push back against misinformation by, by sharing trusted information. Uh, and, uh, and you can get that trusted information on our website at michigan.gov slash vote or at michigan.gov slash election security, which details all that we're doing to secure the process and secure your vote. Uh, so we've got you know, two weeks to go, uh, two weeks from now, in a few hours and two out two weeks and two hours the polls will be about to close in most uh, jurisdictions in our state uh, and um, and so between now and then do everything you can on those three things and you'll be a part of really a historical election cycle historical moment for our democracy and one that we hope will uh, set the standard for more voter engagement at every level of young people uh, and every demographic in our state uh, for years to come. So thank you, everyone. Uh, go, go vote and uh, look forward to hopefully seeing many of you in person soon. Thanks, everybody. And I'd like to lastly thank everybody else for being with us tonight. I think we have our marching orders. So make a plan to vote and make sure your friends know how to vote too. Thank you.